welcome back to Genshin Impact. So we will be starting this episode with the Jade Chamber Rising, which assumedly I think is going to take the entire time. All right. So this is, um, actually, I don't, you guys might remember this, but this was a scene we actually, like, kind of saw the start of, um, I think, uh, two weeks ago? Because, um, yeah, I was, uh, talking to Morax or some. yeah, I was talking to Morax, I think. I have gathered everyone here today to make an important announcement. Perhaps some of you will have heard the news already. I am, in fact, planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Rebuild the Jade Chamber? That's a huge project! So the rumors are true. No wonder the price of building materials has gone up so much lately. The Jade Chamber means a lot to Lady Ningguang. Getting involved in this would be a huge opportunity. Lady Ningguang, is there any way we can be of service? Patience. Since the news made it out a few days ago, I have already had many people contacting me to declare an interest in joining the project. Nevertheless, I do have a few matters I should like to entrust to you here today. The building site has been chosen, and most of the materials have been assembled. Three key items are, however, still outstanding. They are as follows. Sunset Vermilionite, Wonder Cores, and Adepti Sigils. Uh, excuse my ignorance, Lady Ningguang. I, I'm familiar enough with Plostrite, but I've never even heard of those other two. Only sufficiently large pieces of Plostrite, or specifically Vermilionite, may earn themselves the Sunset moniker. This stone is what allows the Jade Chamber to float. Wonder Cores, meanwhile, are the central components of the mechanical structure of the Jade Chamber. Adepti sigils serve as a means of integrating the mechanical devices with Adepti art. They are as indispensable as the mechanical core itself. Although these three items are rare, I trust that with your connections and capabilities, procuring them will not be a question of if, but of when. I take the saying, time is money, more seriously than most. Efficiency is everything. I will pay a generous price for the materials that you find. And in addition, the first three people who collect all the materials will have the opportunity to ask me a question. You may ask me anything, and I will give you an honest answer. I trust that this means of compensation will be to everyone's satisfaction. These things won't be easy to get hold of, but if it means a chance to get some inside information on Liuette Harbor's development plan for next year... Then it's the deal of a lifetime. Information from Lady Ningguang is priceless. Whoever gets to it first takes the market. Haha, <laughs> what a coincidence! I won't divulge too much, but I heard some murmurings about some plot strike just the other day. So excuse me all, but, um, I have some business to do. Better move quickly, or this opportunity will be snatched away from us. Ningguang's rebuilding the Jade Chamber? This is a huge deal! Let's get involved! Absolutely. So you heard my announcement, did you? What do you think? Interested? Can I really ask you anything at all? Yes. Providing the question pertains to something I am knowledgeable about. Maybe I can find out more about my sister. Really? Ooh, then Paima will ask you about how to run a business! Then we'll never be short of Mora ever again! <laughs> of course. But how much information I share with you will depend on your performance. The construction of the Jade Chamber requires a great deal of space. The abandoned mine outside the Golden House has been selected as the building site. Once you have collected the materials, please take them there. I have other business to attend to now. Otherwise, I would gladly escort you to the site in person. 
When you do arrive, please seek out my secretary. Remember, this is a race against the clock. A rare opportunity presents itself to you. Do not let somebody else snatch it from your grasp. Aye, aye, Captain. Ningguang seems super busy. Come on, we better get going. First, we gotta get out of Eugene Terrace. Uh, huh? Look, it seems like there's something kind of fishy going on over there. Ma'am, you seem like an eminent and distinguished young lady to me. I can see that you're easily gonna win this procurement contest Lady Ningguang has set up. As it happens, we have some information about the materials that I really think might interest you. Come on, let's find somewhere a little more private, and we can get down to brass tacks. No, I don't need it. Ah, uh, don't be like that. Hey, come on, don't go! Why don't you stand there after her? Oh, right, yeah. How dare you. You dare talk to a lady like that? Did you hear that? They said they had some useful information! Information's just what we need right now! Let's follow them and see what we can find out! Not wrong, Paimon. But also, we need to try to make sure that young lady doesn't get hurt. Looking. This is a Oh no. <laughs> well, will you look at that, ma'am? Nowhere left to run. Don't worry, we're not bad guys. You give us some mora, we give you a little info. Everybody's a winner. Boss, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at her, the, the white hair, the, the energy she gives off. I, I'm telling you, there, there's something different about her. So what? She's loaded. How are we ever going to repay those gambling debts if we just let money walk away from us, huh? I've already told you. I don't need your information. If you still can't grasp that, I'm happy to repeat it in a way that won't be so easy to forget. Uh, come on, ma'am. You seem like an intelligent lady. I shouldn't have to spell this out to you. It's not about whether you need the info or not, okay? It's about you taking out your money and handing it over and nobody getting hurt. I won't... No more excuses! <sighs> okay. I know you have money. I saw you. Yeah, I saw you. Strolling into Leo Lee Pavilion, ordering a table full of food, and only taking a few bites. Then she knew a kiosk, then Wanmin restaurant. Same story each time. You order all the signature dishes, take a few bites, then you're on your way again. How could you afford to be so wasteful if you weren't from a rich family? And since you're so rich, what's the loss to you in giving us a little spare change, huh? Master warned me not to lay a hand on anyone in Liyue Harbor, but here we are. Hmm, perhaps... Ah, uh, yes. Let's call it fate. Boss, I'm telling you, something's not right. What are you afraid of? We're just selling information. It's not illegal. If she lays a finger on us, all the better. We'll sue her for everything she's worth. They're trying to imit intimidate people into doing business. Oh, you again. Millilith? What, what, what are the Millilith doing here? Did you do this? <clears throat> you ought to mind your own business, I swear! Silence! How dare you threaten innocent civilians? You're coming with us. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't be angry, sir. P p p please, let me explain. The Millilith takes away the hooligans who are surrounding the young lady with white hair. <sighs> Are you alright? Shen He. Uh oh? Shen He? My name. Oh, so your name's Shen He. Paimon's name is. Well, Paimon! And this is Paimon's travel buddy! Oh, I've heard about you two before. <sighs> Thank you for helping to defuse the situation. Uh, 
I could have dealt with it myself, though. I suspect smashing his head against the ground a handful of times is all it would have taken to get him to surrender. Or, you know, maybe be dead, but yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> you, you can't do that! That's way too violent! This is Leela Harbor! There are laws against that kind of stuff, you know! Laws? Have you not heard of the law, Shema? <sighs> no. Apparently not. Really? So, how exactly have you- Um, what was that noise? <sighs> that would be my stomach growling. Hmm, I haven't eaten enough. She's so honest. Wait, that's right! They said you went around all the restaurants ordering this and that and the other, but only took a small bite of each dish. Then of course you're still hungry! So, anything in particular you're hungry for? Hmm, Chingson, Glaze Lily, Violet Grass. These are my usuals. Those are all medicinal herbs. Hmm, medicinal herbs? Kinda hard to explain. Anyway, Boo Boo Pharmacy's not far away. Let's take Shenha there for a big medicinal meal. After all, you can't work on an empty stomach. That's facts right there. Psst. Do you think Shenha might be an adeptus? It seems like it's her first time in Liyue Harbor, and she doesn't seem to get how things work here. If she is an Adeptus, that would explain everything. Not Where wrong. does she fit in with the other Adepti, though? Hmm. I'm super curious. Are you here to buy some herbs? I do hope you brought your prescription. Chingson, Glaze Lily, and Violet Grass, please. Half a pound of each. What kind of prescription is this? Sounds more like a lunch order. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's everything we have in stock. Thank you. She's really eating them! To everyone's astonishment, Shenhei polishes off all the <sighs> medicinal herbs. My hunger has now abated. Hm, thank you. Are they really that good? Hm, rather awful. <sighs> Though they were not completely devoid of sweet fragrance. After consuming a large quantity of them, bitterness is all that remains. So, how come you chow down on these and barely touch the restaurant food? If Paimon had enough, Mora, Paimon would go to the fanciest restaurant in town and order a whole table of food and eat it all in one go! Because I'm not sure whether I will remain here in the future. The food of the mortal realm is most delicious. But should I return to the mountains, yearning for the food here shall only pose an obstacle to my continued spiritual development. Sampling each dish in order to appreciate its taste is enough. Return to the mountains! That proves it! Paimon knew she was an adeptus! Mm, enough about me. What are your plans from here? Oh, right! Paimon almost forgot! We came out to take part in the Rebuild the Jade Chamber competition! And... And now we're probably super behind because we've been held up for so long. Hmm, I see. I heard something about the contest when I was passing by. <laughs> yep! You get to ask Ningguang any question you want if you win! Were you interested in the contest too, Shenha? Hmm. I came for the rebuilding of the Jade Chamber, but until this point I had no intention of joining a contest. However, you have shown me your kindness, and I would now like to lend you my assistance. Oh, don't worry. I ask for nothing in return. Wow! You really don't have to, but having an Adeptus help out will make things a whole lot easier, so... We welcome you to our team. Then let's not delay. I have a plan. Great! Paimon bets this is gonna be the awesomest plan ever! Mm, I am not sure whether or to what extent this plan can be classified as awesome. I do, however, believe it will be highly effective. We simply need to dispose of everyone who is currently ahead of us. Then, we alone shall become the victors. Shen, we, we cannot do that. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain the fact that we, we can't do that. Vito! That is not acceptable! Not by a long shot! Really? 
But I hear that competition is in essence about conflict and one-upmanship. Look, we want to win this competition fair and square, okay? Sunset Vermilion Night, Wonder Course, and Adepti Sigils. Let's start at the top of the list and work down. So, for Plastrite... I was wondering who I could hear arguing over there. So, it's you. Bye, Hugh. What are you doing out here? Lady Ningguang wishes to purchase a large batch of wound dressing. We're running low at the store, so I came out to fetch the ingredients personally. Huh? How can Lady Ningguang need so much wound dressing all of a sudden? I'm not too sure. I did hear she's looking to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Maybe for its first aid on site? I didn't ask, though. Far be it from me to pry into my customer's personal affairs. Oh, and she also borrowed Chi-Chi. Meaning Boo Boo Pharmacy is very short-handed right now. I don't suppose any of you are looking for part-time work by any chance? No, no. We've got other stuff to do. Um, while you're here, though, you seem to know a lot. Have you ever heard of something called Sunset Vermilionite? Ah, the variety of plostrite used in the Jade Chamber, yes? There is some mention of it in the Seven Mountain Treatises. When activated, Sunset Vermilionite rises up all the way into the clouds. It's very rare indeed. As far as the records show, virtually all Sunset Vermilionite in existence has been mined and taken possession of. But the Feiyun Commerce Guild would know far more about this than I do. Okay then, let's go ask at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Thanks, Baiju. You're quite welcome. Good luck to you all. And if there's anything further you need from me, just come to the Boo Boo Pharmacy. All right. So at least we figured out what we need to do next. Oh, we get to see Xingju. We haven't seen him in a while. Or, well, I guess we might not actually get to see him since it says to look for. Master Xingqiu, thank goodness you're finally back. Oh? Why do I detect an urgency in your voice? The guild has had a whole string of strange orders in recently. Everyone's been completely caught off guard. Your father gave me specific instructions to ask you to stay and help out if I happen to see you. I see. Have someone sort the orders by type for now. I'll deal with them myself shortly. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, Master. With you on the job, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Hey, Xingqiu! Glad you're here. We want to ask you for some information. Traveler, Paimon, please wait a moment. Shu, I need to entertain some guests. Please continue with your work for the time being, and we'll discuss the matter of the guild's orders in more detail later on. Understood, Master Xingqiu. Then I will leave you in peace. I wasn't counting on finding you here today. What's going on? And how, pray tell, may I be of service? Xingqiu, have you ever heard of... Sunset Vermilionite? Oh, I see. So you've entered Lady Ningguang's contest as well. As well? Do you mean... The truth is, the Feiyun Commerce Guild is in possession of some Sunset Vermilionite, but only one piece. We are holding it on behalf of someone who has asked us to put it up for auction, and a lot of interested parties have already come to us inquiring about the price. At the end of the day, it all comes down to supply and demand. In this case, I'm guessing the final transaction price may be in excess of 500 million mora. Okay, that's a little bit much, man. I don't think we can, uh, I don't think we can afford that. 500 million?! I, yeah, exactly what I said. I don't think I can afford that. Honestly, I would recommend that you don't bother bidding on this one. The price is greatly inflated, and it's just not worth it. But, without any sunset vermilionite... Don't panic. I don't suppose you ever heard of Seagazer? Who? Never heard of them. Hmm. Seagazer was once very close to Mountain Shaper, but if I am not mistaken, he has already passed away. Yes, precisely. I didn't know anyone else knew about him. According to records of Drifting Clouds, 
Seagazer once built an abode to store his rarest and most exquisite treasures, among which was some sunset vermilionite. After Seagazer passed, the abode was abandoned, and its location was lost to time. Luckily, I came into possession of a stack of folk history books just recently. They make some oblique references to this lost abode, and after cross-referencing them against each other, I'm now fairly certain that it is situated in the Leisha area. That's great! Um, but is it really okay for us to just go and take his treasure? Wouldn't it be a little, you know, disrespectful with him being an adeptus? <laughs> <laughs> you needn't worry. As far as I understand, Seagazer was very open-minded. Even while he was alive, he wouldn't have let something like this bother him. Open-minded? I have not heard of Seagazer being described in this way before. May I ask where you read that? Just a rumor I heard out in the mountains. <sighs> All right then, let's go. Hmm. There's something about this young lady that reminds me of a good friend of mine. Oh, How crazy. I almost forgot. Adepti abodes tend to have very ingenious designs, especially when it comes to their defense mechanisms. Plus, it's likely to be crawling with monsters after being abandoned for so long. So please, be very careful. Okay, will. we will be. Thanks, Xingqiu. Oh, that's not too far. place was hidden using a special Adepti art, but now that I have removed it, we can inspect the area more closely. Wow, that's amazing! Yep, let's take another look around! Hey, look! Is that a new Sealy over there? Wait, possibly, perhaps. No, no. This is the abode of that Adeptus. With any luck, the sunset vermilionite we're looking for should be in here. Really? Let Paimon see! Huh? Isn't that the Sealy from before? Look, it's gone and snuck beneath the clouds! And now that Paimon takes a closer look, the rocks and trees here don't seem complete! Oh, could there be something below the clouds? What do you think, Shanna? These are not real clouds. They are the product of an Adepti art used for spatial partitioning. If we want to go down, we must first destroy the mechanism that is maintaining the Adepti art. All right, then let's do it. I sense the presence of monsters in this place. I don't know where they are hiding, so we'd better be careful. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
This looks so cool. I think I will forever be upset by the fact that you can't use the camera in the domain. My will embodied! Take your true form! Start activating something right now. I ain't, I ain't done yet. Yeah. yeah. Can't handle your drink. Huh. Absorption test. Animal test. Six to three oh eight. Stand clear. <laughs> My will embodied. <laughs> Cryo incarnate. Oh my goodness. I need this rock. Oh. I didn't collect it, that's why. Oh. What well, hello hello? Destroy the abode's barrier. Ha. There's a chest here. Is that all this was? I was just getting the chest? I thought this was part of like the puzzle. It appears that we've been taken for intruders. This time, why not allow me to take care of this? It's the fire. Eat this. My will embodied. Shoot. Try not to enjoy the transfiguration. By ordinance divine. of the mechanism is exposed. Now's our chance. Oh, are we just... Okay. Look at you, Spoonfield! Transfiguration! <laughs> nice and spicy! Absorption test! Animal test 6308! <laughs> like we need to go further down. But before that, let's destroy the guard mechanisms on this level first. My will embodied! Oh. Do your master's bidding! Transfiguration! Absorption test! I most definitely thought that that was going to form. like suddenly become a wave. Oh! Oh! This is fine. How about we don't? Think you can bully me? 
urine for a little shit. Nice and spicy. Animal test 6308. Stand clear. Transfiguration. I was gonna say, I don't think I can deal damage to it now. That wasn't so bad. Unless it's gonna suddenly wake up the uh, rune guard while I'm finishing this. Transfiguration. E there we go. Now it's. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Luckily, like that wasn't uh, hey, ended. That series on the move again. Let's catch up with it. Huh? Something looks different about this stone wall. Let's take a closer look. I like when they hide, um, like, chests in here. <laughs> Especially when it's, like, a puzzle that you have to, like, figure out. I don't know. I just, I think that's cool. Enjoy this too much. Nice and spicy. Yeah. Take your true form. Think you can bully me? Stand clear. Yeah. They are special. By ordinance divine. Enhanced animal module seventy-five. Ooh, there we go. Animal test 6308. Come a little closer. I'm the right man. It's Scratch. Absorption test. My will embodied. Shoot. No, you're not. 
but... <laughs> Transfiguration! Out of the frying pan, into the fire! Surrendering will be gentle. Do your master's bit! Oh! Oh, Jesus Christ, that's I'm not okay. Shake it and stir! Actually, quite rude. Animal test 6308. Oh, no. Absorption test. Why is she like? Oh. The way um, the way she fights is really pretty. I. Like it reminds me a lot of like Ayaka's and Nilu's fighting style. It's a very pretty fighting style, and I've I adore it, and that's why they're my favorite. Uh. <laughs> Vermilionite? Quite possibly. Don't mind if I do. Oh goodness, it's so big. Is this it? Is this the sunset vermilionite? Hi, Mon, I think so. It's so huge! It needs to be big to get the whole Jade Chamber airborne, I guess. That's true, but then again, why isn't it floating? Paul Strait doesn't float until it's activated. It may look different from most ordinary stones, but it weighs around the same amount. Only after being activated does Plostrite reveal its true nature, breaking free from the shackles of the mortal realm and ascending up into the heavens. Wow, Shenha. You seem to know everything about this. Only because my master is fond of chatting about these things. The moment she has some time to spare, she'll come straight for me and start telling story after story. I wonder who that could be. I don't care for her stories most of the time. I certainly didn't expect them to ever come in handy like this. I wonder who this master is. Hold on a sec! Paimon just realized something. If we activate it here, there's no way we'll be able to get it back to the site, right? Heck, we'll be dragged up into the sky too! But if we don't activate it, how else are we gonna lift it? This rock must weigh well over a thousand pounds, surely! Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. Are you sure? Uh, be careful. Yeah, seriously, be careful. Don't strain yourself. Please don't worry. I'm well aware that a Plostrite sample this large must be highly valuable. I will be gentle with it and make sure it does not get damaged. It's your safety you have to be careful of. My safety? That's right! Paimon's sure you can handle it and everything. But if something this heavy lands on you, you're gonna get yourself hurt, no matter who you are. You gotta be extra careful when lifting heavy objects. It's just common sense. Hmm. Is it now? Hmm. Well then, thank you. I'll go on ahead with the Plostrite. Let's meet at the building site later. Shenha lifts up the Plostrite and leaves. Shenha able to carry that huge rock all by herself? Huh. Adepti super strength much? We can't slow down yet. Let's go meet her at the building site. Heck yeah, let's go. Wait, did I leave my apron outside to dry? The rain has stopped. Come with me. Let's pick some matsutake. I like how there's just a seatly down there. Like, hello. Oh, 
Oh goodness, there's so many people staring at our work. Well, Shenhe's work, honestly. Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those Adepti, surely. Oh, mighty Adeptus, please give me your blessing so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenhe! And Ningguang's little helper! <laughs> ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plostrite specimen. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper. It's secretary. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary. What do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? In truth, it is the finest piece of plostrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. Woo! As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, you are welcome to stay there. Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhe! Shenhe! Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises! Oh, really? What kind of reaction is that? So strange. Aren't you happy about it? Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon can't help but hold their head up high and break into a big, smug smile! You could have just said a big smile. You didn't have to include the smug part, Paimon. I've had similar compliments before. They call me an adeptus, treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah, cause that's how adepti are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive, too. Way different than normal people. But uh, I am not... Uh... Shenha? Are you all right? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Um, well, Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. No need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. You can't do that! It's dangerous out in the wild on your own! When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a nice, comfy bed. All right? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Guest accommodations are way far more comfortable than the wilderness. Okay. If you insist. I am insisting. Now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. Gonna take a nice little snooze. Oh. Wait, but I thought I had a. Okay. I thought it was leading me up there. I guess not. Chamber secretaries, Ningguang's little helpers, 
Hello? Oh, jeez. Hello? <sighs> it's shocking how much work there is to do, even for the three of us. And she's been handling it alone all along. The Chising secretary clearly isn't an ordinary person. It's so frustrating. That was a weird little game glitch. Huh? You're... Aren't you Ningguang's servants? How come you're here? <clears throat> we are Miss Ningguang's private secretaries, not servants. I mean... okay. <sighs> Have you seen Miss Ganyu, Traveler? It has been several days since Ganyu left for Joyun Karst. She's the general secretary of the Liyue Qixing. We've only taken over her responsibilities until she gets back. Why did she go to join in Karst? Ah, even though the Qixing have made peace with the Adepti after the latter had denounced Liyue, they still want to pay their respects to the Illuminated Ones. They commissioned Ganyu as their envoy to deliver a letter to Julian Karst and bring the Adepti the latest news about the crisis. Still, Ganyu should have been back to her usual responsibilities by now, but she's disappeared without a trace. Is that so? Maybe Ganyu just took a little detour. Who can blame her after working so hard? I mean, Paimon, let's be real. That's... that's not... like Ganyu? I'm afraid it's not very likely. Ever since we met Ms. Ganyu, she's been nothing but the most conscientious person in all of Liyue. Even when it's time for her annual leave, Ms. Ganyu stays on duty at Yuahai Pavilion saying, There is still so much to do. She couldn't possibly be using her mission as an excuse to slack off. Oh, Paimon sees how it is. But she's half adeptus. She wouldn't get in trouble, right? Why do you look so upset? <sighs> it's because of this absurd workload of hers. <sighs> when we first heard the three of us would be taking over for Miss Ganyu, we thought it would simply be a matter of changing our work environment. <sighs> we couldn't have imagined that Miss Ganyu's daily workload far exceeds what the three of us are used to doing. The Adeptus lineage is truly remarkable. Speaking of Julian Karst, Traveler, I've heard that you can go in and out of there as you please. Of course! We've been there lots of times! Ah, oh, that's good news. Could you go to Julian Karst and find Miss Ganyu for us? Preferably before we collapse under this workload. I can do it. Lives are obviously at stake here. Ah, oh. oh, we're saved. I remember Miss Ganyu said that she'd be visiting Cloud Retainer's abode. You might as well start looking for her there. It's about time she came back to work. Otherwise... Oh. No, perhaps we should go to Lady Ningguang first and bring up our overtime pay again. Yeah, yeah, can bring up your overtime pay again. So Ganyu left to visit Cloud Retainer. Doesn't she live in Mel Outsong? We should hurry up. Paimon hopes we can find her there. I hope so. Ignore, ignore all my chests and markers. <laughs> oh ho ho! Hello, Miss Ganyu. Huh? The person standing over there. That's Ganyu. We finally found her. Hi, Ganyu. Ganyu! Here you are! You two. I did not expect to meet you here. Is it official or private affairs that bring you here? Oh, I shouldn't. I have left the human world. Please contact the Yuahai Pavilion regarding matters concerning the commercial port. Left the human world? Huh? You don't want to be the Chising secretary anymore? But they're all waiting for you to come back! That's why you're here? You want me to come back? I'm afraid you came here in vain. What? Did something happen? The clouds fold and unfold. The tide ebbs and flows. It was meant to be. When the Adepti entrusted humans with overseeing Liyue, I knew it was only a matter of time until I had to leave. My Adepti blood makes me unwelcome in Liyue Harbor. 
I delivered the letter and came back to Liowa Harbor, only to discover that I had been replaced by Baiwen, Bai Shao, and Bai Shu. Perhaps that mission of mine was just a pretext to remove me. Since the Qi Sing gave me a chance to leave with dignity, I decided to be tactful as well. I believe there's been a huge misunderstanding. I appreciate your kindness, but there's no need for your words of comfort. No, Ganyu, actually, there's been a huge misunderstanding. After a thousand years away, I came back to Juyun Karst. Looking at the clouds floating among the mountains brings me peace of mind. I feel better now. Uh, but... Who disturbs the peace of these mountains? Cloud Retainer? We're terribly sorry, we just... <clears throat> One merely jests. One felt your presence the moment you set foot upon this land. Wow, you adept I really are impressive. Come here to chat about the old times with Ganyu. It looks like you get along quite well. Chat about the old times? <sighs> ah, a matter leaves you at an impasse then. Not to worry. One is exceptional at seeking avenues for conversation. One has been one's own companion in idle talk for many a year. Ah, yes. Since you are Ganyu's friends, tales from her youth shall one apprise you of, perhaps? Yes, please. Oh, Cloud Retainer. <sighs> Nothing to be ashamed of. You were so cute as a child. One is most certain that your friends would like to hear of it. Now that's a good topic. Ooh, Paimon wants to hear it! Uh... Hmm. <laughs> Little Ganyu loved when the horns on the top of her head were caressed. When one was still taking care of her, one was pestered most often to touch her horns. She was elsewise loath to sleep. Wow! Plump she was back then. Why, when she stumbled while we ascended the mountain, she would roll down to the bottom like a little ball. The day Ganyu bumped into a pilgrim was the first time she saw a real human in the flesh. So fearful she was that she hid in a rock's cleft for two days and nights. One found her wailing of a monster she had seen. <laughs> Cloud retainer? Oh. Uh, forget it. It's about time for my training. I will take my leave. Okay. I think you upset Ganyu. Ah, one's intention was merely to relieve the awkward tension. Also, quick pause, is it just me or has the camera angles been weird? And you did the exact opposite. Impressive! Be that so? Huh, but returning to Ganyu, most gladdened one is of your arrival. One cannot help but feel that remaining in Jueyun Karst shall not be good for her. One will tell you more about her, if you should permit it. Most benevolent among all Adepti are the Chilin. They drink only spring water and eat only whole grain. But perhaps the mountainous dwellings of Adepti in Joyung Karst might be too lonely for her human side. Under moonlight did one see her last. She stood by the precipice's edge, and upon the mist-veiled mountains she gazed. Her thin figure was immersed in the vast sea of clouds. One noticed her loneliness, and sought to convince her to go back to the human world. But, just then, she said thus. Liyua Harbor feels even lonelier than Julian Karst. When I look at the sea of clouds in Juyun Karst, I merely feel the loneliness of a solitary cloud gazer. When I step into the sea of people in Liyue, I feel the loneliness of an inhuman that doesn't belong in the human world. One did, by chance, hear this much of Ganyu's thoughts. Alone, she will find her predicament hard to conquer. One hopes that you will accompany her. Oh, Retainer's right. We can't leave Ganyu depressed like that. Besides, Liyue hasn't given up on her. She's got it all wrong. Anyways, what's that training Ganyu was talking about? 
She has sought to reclaim her adeptus side since returning to Zhuoyun Karst. At her behest, one has organized training for her to achieve that end. She should be in the southern part of Mount Outsong right now, preparing for the trial. Huh, is that so? Let's go take a look then! Alright. Gone you! Stop being silly and come back to Leeway. So here you are, Ganyu. Why did you come here? We want to keep you company. Ah, uh, I... Uh, humans should not remain in the realm of Adepti for too long. Hmm. Considering the kindness you have shown me, I can let you stay for the Adeptus training. Yay! This trial was prepared by Cloud Retainer. Its goal is to help me feel like an Adeptus again. The training is much to her signature style. I hope it won't make it seem like she is too unaware of the abilities of others. Is it difficult? No, I'm aware of your strength, Traveler. The power hidden within you is not inferior to mine. If you're ready, we shall begin the training. All right, let's do this. Wait, what am I supposed to be doing? What? Oh. Really? <gasps> oh, that's so annoying. Okay. There we go. Oh. And for some reason, I thought I'd be able to, um, Walk on that. I just want to get closer to it. That's 6 out of 12. Two totems right next to each other over there. There we go. There we go. Oh. We've completed the task. What do you think? Perhaps I'd make a good Adeptus. I agree. You possess many qualities similar to those of Adepti, despite having none of their blood. Ganyu, what were you planning to do once your training was over? 
The training's not over yet. The part prepared by Cloud Retainer is only the first trial. Huh? So there are more trials prepared by other Adepti? Is it Moon Carver? No. The only Adeptus who can unlock my true potential is... Who is it? It's herself. Conqueror of Demons. Oh, never mind. Huh. So it's Shell. That cold-hearted loner? How come he's prepared a trial for you? How oh, interesting. I found him unapproachable at first, too. But I believe that being able to face him is an important part of my homecoming. He's already waiting for me. Come along if you're interested. Of course I'm interested. Of course we are! Let's go! Oh my god, I was right! In my head, I was like, it's really weird that they're, like, having us do this whole thing with Ganyu. I don't remember doing this before, but maybe it's just been a while. Nope, I was right. Race you. Oh my goodness. And now, now this is going to be broken into two parts because I'm an idiot. Race you. Hi there! Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. So, business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Paimon's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Paimon couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Let's buy one for Shenhua, too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save it for breakfast tomorrow. <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. Paimon, the way you speak about people sometimes, it's almost like they aren't standing right there. It's a little weird and kind of rude, honestly. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Have a good rest, Shenha. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Hey! Isn't that Cloud Retainer? What's she doing here? Let's go and say hi. This is why I didn't second guess the fact that we were seeing, like, in talking to Cloud Retainer. <laughs> thought we were still doing the same quest. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good, yeah! So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor, all the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He, to some degree. Cool! So, what's her Adeptus name anyway? Calling her Shenhua feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead. Her Adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shenhua have an Adeptus name? Uh... Don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shenhua is human. Right. Wait, what? I thought so. What? You knew already? <sighs> so is Paimon the only one who didn't know? When 
she got a little weird about you referring to her as an adepti? Yeah, that's about the time when you should have realized that, oh, maybe she's not an adepti. Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Well, to start with, her problem-solving methods are extremely direct. Ah, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shanha, then aged around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival. But not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhe might have... Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shenhe may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind, and she had experienced her fair share of this even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. So when Shen He talks about her master, she means Indeed, you. it is one to whom she refers. Shen He has an extraordinary constitution making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Mooncarver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of Calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her... somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the Red Ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shenhe because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion? Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Ningguang once made a bold assertion 
that this is to be the era of the contract between Liu Wei and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. All right. So, Shenhua isn't an Adeptus after all. She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. Yeah, probably. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I'm sorry that I kind of screwed up there. We started Ganyu's story quest by accident. I don't know what happened there. I didn't, like... It just only changed the objective, so I thought that, oh, like, maybe... Maybe I had gotten it wrong, and... And I, I assumed because it was having to do with Shenha, and, and, and I figured, uh, you know, Ganyu being there as a part of the story isn't that uncommon of a thing. But, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will be finishing this in the next episode. So, to do, I will see you guys on the other side. Thank you.